A steam engine collection on my kitchen table part 2. A look at the Stuart beam engines plus some other things. Here are two almost identical Stuart beam engines. One has been built by an engineer and the other one has been assembled from a Stuart Models pre-machined kit. I'm pretty sure that the pre-machined kit is the one with the blue base and the other beam engine behind the blue one I think has been built by an engineer. It's very well made, there are one or two parts missing from it. It's loosely bolted together and the eccentric strap is missing. Also the top cylinder cover is slightly different. The beam engine with the blue base is also very loosely bolted together and the Watts parallel motion is missing. Also in with the collection of steam engines was this flywheel. It's an old style Stuart Models flywheel and it has a large blowhole around the rim. But the outer part of the rim is more than thick enough to machine it to get rid of this blowhole. When I hold this flywheel against a modern equivalent of the flywheel, as you can see the outer rim is quite thick. So if I machine this flywheel slightly, it will get rid of the blowhole and look a bit more delicate. When I opened this box, I found another beam engine. This is not a Stuart beam engine. This one's made by a company called Chilton Model Steam. And this base casting is a thing of real beauty. If I built this up, I don't think I'd even bother painting it. Just look at the sharpness and the detail, this is a big lump of cast iron, and it's beautiful. And so is the beam. These look like lost wax castings, they really are much better than the normal sand castings you'd see. The quality of this engine surprised me, because I looked on the internet, and this pre-machine kit is not expensive. Take a look for yourself, I've put the web address on screen. This company seemed to make quite a variety of different things, and if they're all to this standard, well, they're probably worth buying. This is the valve chest and it's a piston valve, which I'm not thrilled with that, I don't like piston valves on small engines. Provided it's kept lubricated on an engine like this which will basically be going very slowly, it should last quite a long time. And then I found this in the box, this is a Perseus nameplate of the Perseus engine, so I'll put that somewhere safe where I don't lose it, and I'll refit it to the engine in due course. The part I'm holding in my hand, and here's a magnified view, is the crankshaft, this looks like it's been machined from the solid, or from a casting, and it's very nice indeed. Once again in this close-up you can see these are really superb castings. Also in the collection is another unbuilt Chilton model steam engine, and once again the parts are impeccably machined. This is a single cylinder bottle type engine, it's a particular design where the bottom part of the standard is much wider than the top. And these engines, to me, always look a bit too tall, but they were very popular a lot of years ago. The full-size version of these engines were used for a variety of applications, and engines like this were often used to drive very large fairground rides, like the Gallopers, and had horses around the edge that went up and down as they revolved. Wooden horses, that is, using real horses would not be good. Health and safety warning, it's not a smart idea to use real horses on fairground rides. As you can see from these images, the engine's really well packed, it's very well thought out, that's just the packing. And from a beginner's point of view, if you don't want to spend too much money, these are an ideal first step. They just bolt together. Very similar to the Cotswold Heritage range, but I think the Cotswold Heritage engines are pre-painted. Let's look at what else is in the collection. This is a box of BA and ME taps and dies, and you can never have too many of these. This is a set of carbon steel taps and dies with a very nice die holder. I prefer high speed steel taps and dies, but for model engineers, if you're careful with them, carbon steel ones, provided the good quality, can be good. No good though for an industrial application when you're using them every day and really giving them a hard time, but fine in the home workshop. Although not all taps and dies are equal, this is a metric set of taps and dies, and they really are poor. I don't like these at all. These are not bad though, they're in an MDF case, which is better than a plastic one I suppose, and they look okay. Don't forget though, you can pay an awful lot of money for tooling, so it's very easy to criticise the cheap stuff, and as always, I must say that you generally get what you pay for. This is a fairly recent Stuart Models catalogue, and if you haven't got one of these, I recommend that you get one. Also with this collection, there are a couple of books showing you how to build a Stuart Beam engine, very useful. I notice on the front cover of these books it shows the beam engine fitted with a governor. 
and to be honest you don't often see this. Here's a book about full size beam engines and we'll peruse that later. And it looks quite interesting. Well that's if like me you're into steam engines and beam engines. So what is this? It's the instruction sheet showing you how to assemble the Chilton model steam vertical engine. And it looks very straightforward I must say. From an instruction point of view I find this type of exploded diagram very useful. It just makes the job quicker and much easier. In amongst this steam engine collection, I showed it in the last episode, was a number 10 part finished. I've given this to my friend, but here's the machining diagram. And here is the invoice showing the total cost of the pre-machined beam engine. This is fairly recent because I noticed the addresses in Bridport. And here's the instruction sheet and drawings to build that. So I hope you've enjoyed the tour of my new collection of steam engines sat on the kitchen table. I'm definitely going to have to have some sort of a sale because the workshop is filled to capacity now. I can't move in there and these have to go in. I don't know where I'm going to put them. I'm also thinking about selling the larger of my two lathes. So if anybody wants a Spartan Brown model 1024, I will have one for sale shortly. It's big, it's heavy and I can't post it. So it's definitely going to be collection only. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.